This is John Stark with Stark Avionics and we're going to do a video on configuring a GTX 345 to go to a GTN series, either the GTN 650 or GTN 750. First thing we're going to do is put it in um, setup mode. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hold um, the enter button in while applying power. Alright, there you go. And there's really not much to do to the very first page. If you really want to, you can hit the cursor button and go in and um, go to test audio and go down to tone and you'll actually start hearing the uh, uh, tone in your speaker or headset if you have either one of those on, if you hooked up the audio. Uh, message one is gonna say something like traffic or something like that. Uh, you don't have to test this out, but if you want to test out your audio, that's how you do it. But once you let go of this, it um, it just becomes um, nothing. You can change it to a female voice if you prefer to have a female voice uh, talk to you while you're flying. Uh, you're going to move up and down the pages with 8 and 9. 9, you can see, would be down. Um, it's got a little arrow down. So we're going to go down to the next page. Function is where you go to the different sets of pages. So we'll save that for later. We'll go down to the next page. We got nothing on this one, so you can pass this one. Uh, nothing here, traffic alert, and that's it. So that's it for the very first set of pages. We're gonna hit the functions, the uh, transponder format. But let's say that you had channel two, you were using channel two. This is RS-232. We have to look at how you hooked it up. If you used um, the RS-232 that's coming from the GTN 650 or 750, it's coming in on, let's say, channel two instead of channel one. So what we wanna do, hit the cursor to make it go live, hit enter, and it brings you over to this. Now we want to turn that off because remember we're doing it on channel two. So we're going to go ahead and move this until it's off, hit enter, and you see it did off on both in and out, and that's fine. So we're good there. We're going to hit enter and go back over to the channel. We're going to change the channel now by using the up and down arrows. Now we're on channel two. We're going to hit enter. On the input, we're going to choose transponder format one. You've got all these different formats in here, remote and so on and so forth. Actually, on the GTX 345, we are going to want to use remote format one. And this will allow you to control it remotely from your um, GTN. So let's just go ahead and you know, use remote format one. Hit enter. And now you're done. There's actually three RS-232 channels. You're only going to do one for this purpose. Now, if you had, for example, on channel one, you had RS-232 um, altitude coming in then you go back up into channel one and you'd want to set that up and so you would set that up as an altitude format usually it's going to be a not connects it's going to be altitude format it's either going to be 25 feet or 100 feet 100 feet is usually pretty safe to select that one and you go ahead and hit enter and there you go now we're set up for a serial altitude and um, on channel one and then also on channel two we are set up for talking rs-232 um, with remote control feature to a GTN 650 or 750. So let's go down to the next page, RS 422, we're not using that. Um, 429, we're not using that. 429, not using that. Uh, we are gonna use this. This is the HSDB interface. This is our ethernet. And it says no there. We're gonna hit the cursor there. And we're gonna hit it to GTN. We're gonna hit enter. And then we're going to change that to yes. We definitely want yes on that. And we're going to hit enter. Hit cursor off. And you see how it's GTN and yes. So that means that turned on the Ethernet port so it can talk via RS-232 and Ethernet, also known as HSDB. Now, here's something funny. When you go to the next thing here, which is discrete, and you come back up here, sometimes it will go back to saying um, G600 or G500 no. That's fine because we're not using a G500. So if it goes back to that, it doesn't mean that it's not still set up for GTN and yes. Once you put it in there, it is in there for good unless you change it. All right, so we're gonna go to discrete in. Now you're only gonna use the discrete in if you're using um, gray code. So if you've got a, um, a gray code or a Gilliam code, they call it different things, then what you're gonna wanna do is hit the cursor in, enter, go over to function, and we're gonna do that until we get to Gilliam, there you go. That's another way for saying gray code, okay, or parallel code. 
you're going to hit enter there and you're going to hit yes. Now you've got that in, hit the cursor off, you've got discrete in, you've got gilliam, and you've got yes. So that's telling this that it has a gray code encoder, which is the older style encoder. If you have the serial encoder, we've already set it up for serial encoder. Obviously, if you don't have a serial encoder, you don't want to set it up on RS-232 for the serial. All right, we're done with these pages, so let's go to the next page. Uh, we'll leave that one alone. Altitude, yeah, if you want to change these, it's fine, but of course, if you change the altitude units in Celsius, sure, you can change it to Fahrenheit, but you probably don't have an OAT probe hooked up, so it doesn't matter. Uh, not worried about that one. Not worried about that one. Not that one. Leave Bluetooth enabled, and that's it for these pages, so we didn't really have anything there. This, believe it or not, I would suggest setting up, um, because Garmin doesn't set them up the way that they should be set up. I think this at about six, both of your photo cells at about six. And what it'll do is when at nighttime, it'll give you a little bit brighter. Uh, default from the factory, it's so dark you can't hardly see it. So photo cell in six. Let's go to the next page, another photo cell. This is for the keypad part. Again, cursor, enter. And then we're gonna use the eight to change this. And they change it to five or six, it doesn't matter, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's good. Now you got your photo cell set up. And there's really nothing else here. These are all about lighting. We don't care about lighting anymore. Now we're going to the next set of pages. Now, no OAT uh, sensor, outside air temperature. Altitude source, we sure do. We have altitude source. Now, this is where you're going to put down RS-232-1, like we um, plugged in there, if you used RS-232. If not, then you're going to go to Gilliam. And that's your gray code. So one of those two, depending on how you hooked it up, we'll hit enter. Now we don't have an altitude source um, number two, so we'll just go ahead and hit that cursor button off and go to the next. GPS source. Well, sure, we have a GPS source. It's a GTN. So we're going to hit cursor, and the source is going to be on whatever we set it up to. In this case, we set it up on RS-232 port two, if you remember. That's what we uh, told it to go to remote format one. You remember that? That's how we hooked it up. Okay, so we've decided that we have RS-232 port two being used because we programmed it earlier for uh, remote format one. And integrity is the next one. So we'll enter, go to the next one. It's not unknown. We definitely want to have a seven in there. So guys, if you're using the GTN, it's definitely gonna be a seven. You can leave these blanks. I mean, you're really not gonna have much long, ladder long offset on your antenna. GPS source 2, well, assuming you're only going to have one GTN, then that's it. You don't need it, so we'll, we'll skip this one. Altitude encoder, only if you have a Garmin encoder. That special clip-on Garmin encoder, in this case, we don't. Uh, this we do. So if you're using a panel unit, you're going to hit cursor button, and you're going to say the connectors are forward, because they are. They're up front. There you go. And then these, the vent is actually to the left. So we are going to find where it says left wing, hit enter, yaw is going to be zero, and then hit the cursor off and you're done with this page. We just told it how to um, do its internal AHARs. And then we are going to have to sit here, hit cursor, hit enter, and then we just got to wait. So uh, this part of the video is just going to be waiting until it aligns. It takes about 30 seconds. Okay, after waiting about a minute, you'll see the countdown start at 30 seconds here. Now it's all the way down to four seconds because I cut out some of the time. And then you're done. So you're going to hit um, clear and you're done with this page. Okay? And this brings us to, I think, the last of the config pages. So aircraft category. It's definitely going to be light. Just trust me, that's what you need to be. It's anything under like, I don't know, 6,000 pounds or something is considered light. So you're good there. Go light. Uh, max speed, for most people, it's going to be in the less than 300. But if you really don't go over 150 knots max, then you can choose them 150 knot max. So um, for my case, I'm going to put 300 in there. You put whatever suits your airplane. Hit the cursor off, go to the next. Aircraft width, this is going to be whatever your width is. This is in meters, so we'll just say, I don't know, 25 meters wide um, length. And we'll call it 25 again or so um, width. Let's say 23. 
but whatever suits uh, your airplane, that's what you're going to use for the width. Next one, 1090, we're not going to touch that. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and turn these on because so we want it to be capable of doing everything as far as ADS-BN goes. So we'll go ahead and put both those on yes. Uh, leave that alone. Ah, the tail number. So this is where you put your tail number. It'll automatically put in all the other information. So you come in here and you hit your cursor button. Um, go down until you hit edit. Then when you see edit, you hit enter. And you have to put the N of the N number. So always put N. Okay, there's your N. It'll jump by itself. It'll jump to the next one after about two seconds. And you can put one and whatever your N number happens to be. All right, so let's say that that's your end number, one, two, three, four. That's it. Enter. It'll automatically put that hex number in there for you, so you don't have to do that. So you're good there. Get the cursor off. You're done with that. Uh, allow pilot to edit. No. Don't need to worry about that. That's it, guys. That is how you do it. There's nothing else here. Um, these are the next... Uh, I hit function and went to the next set of pages. These are just telling you what's going on in the airplane. Um, they're not stuff that you can set. So you're done, and then we'll pick up um, where the GTN starts uh, configuring. Okay, it's time to configure the GTN. This is a 750, but the 650 is going to be the same thing. Hold the home button in, apply power to your unit, and let's let it fire up. Just keep holding the home button in, don't let it go. You can hold that for about 10 seconds. When it gets bright, you can let it go. And let's let it go in, into the setup mode. Now this has to be done in a very specific um, sequence. So what we want to do is actually turn things off instead of turning things on, which is kind of strange. So you're going to go into uh, HSDB, and you see how it says the port's connected? Maybe port 3 is what you're using um, for... Um, connecting to your GTN, uh, GTX 345, we are going to disconnect that. Go back, interface to equipment, we don't want to see this. We want it to be not present. And then the transponder, it says present, we can't do anything about that, but that's fine. Now that we've done that, we've disconnected that, let's go back into the RS-232. So this is the main screen here. We are going to go into GTN setup. We just went into the HSDB and we turned it off. We want to make sure it's nothing is connected. We don't want that connected. We want nothing connected. We want to go into interface equipment, which normally we'd want to see our transponder. We don't want to see anything in here. Now, if it does have it grayed out like this, there's nothing that we can do about that. I can actually go in here, probably hit update config. Okay, interface. Yeah, it's still showing that. There's nothing I can do about that. That's fine but we want to make sure that um, Ethernet is off because it won't let us um, do what we really want to do, which is this RS-232. So let's let's go ahead and just um, let's turn all this stuff off. I've got a bunch of stuff on here. I don't want to confuse you. Okay, now I'm hitting update and say, you don't have to worry about what I'm doing right now. What I've done is I went to RS-232, HSDB, interfaced equipment, I turned it all off so we can start at scratch. If you don't do that, you'll have problems. So now, the first thing we want to do is set up the RS-232. So we have to ask ourselves, let me turn this off. We have to ask ourselves, what did we use? Well, we have to look at our wiring print and see what port we use. Let's assume that we used RS-232 port two to talk to the transponder. If that's the case, we're gonna set that up for GTX mode S plus number one, just like that. That is all there is to the RS-232 setup. That's all there is to it. We're gonna hit back. You can hit update config now. Um, we're going to do that a few times. And we're going to go to interfaced equipment. Interfaced equipment. Now, let's go ahead and go back and get, let's turn our Ethernet port on. Now, what port did you do Ethernet on? 
Let's say that you used port three. We'll turn that on and we'll get out of this and we'll update our config. Forget that it says fail. This is just a, a setup here I've got going on here. So what we did is we changed the RS-232 to the port that we want this GTN to talk to our transponder. Then we set up the HSDB, which is the ethernet, and we set it up to talk on um, port three to the transponder. So those are the two ways it's um, connected to the transponder. If you remember, that's what we did on the transponder. We set up RS-232, and then we went in there and set up the HSDB um, to uh, talk to a GTN series. The last thing we're going to do, and then we're done, that's not too bad, is we're going to go in here and we have to hit ADSB select source. We want to select that as GTX1, just like I just did. So all you got to do is hit present. It's, going to, it's, it's just going to um, read GTX1, and then you're going to scroll down here, and you should see this, present G, um, GTX mode S1. When you set up the RS-232 like you did in the, um, a couple pages ago, when you go here... Let's update it one last time. All right, so when you went here and you connected this, remember we just did this a second ago. When you did that, it automatically told it it had interfaced equipment transponder here. That's why you can't set it. You can push on that all you want because you already set it by doing the RS-232. However, you did not tell it to go and do the ADSB source in. So we're, we went ahead and put um, present GTX1 in there. So we have set up the RS-232, we've set up the Ethernet, or HSDB, and then we went to Interface Equipment and did that one last setup, which was the um, source here, the ADSB source. Well, again, we don't have to worry about this, this was already done for us. Before you leave this page, always hit Update Config, and that's it, you're done.